Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to set up your Surface Pro 8 for digital art. There's about five or six things that you really want to be able to do and know how to do in order to take advantage of this beautiful tablet form factor to get rid of the keyboard or to find a Bluetooth keyboard so you can use your hotkeys the way that you need to use them to be productive, effective, and efficient. And it's a lot more fun when all of those things line up and you're able to kind of get into the zone. So this is a painting I did, or a pencil sketch that I did in Rebel 5 Pro, which is what I recommend the most for anyone who's trying to do natural media reproduction in digital. So awesome program for watercolor, oils, acrylics, pencils, charcoals, all that stuff. So uh, Rebel 5 Pro is great. Clip Studio Paint is great. Those two would be my top two recommendations and I'll put links to those in the description below. So we're gonna use the artist pad that is this guy over here and we're gonna use that to do a couple things in this video. I recommend if you're using keyboard shortcuts and you're drawing on a Surface Pro 8, then you need this. Even a Windows tablet with touchscreen, this is a great combination, something that you need. And we're gonna go over here and we're gonna to go to the Surface app. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to adjust the pressure sensitivity. And so there's a couple things that you wanna keep in mind and I'm gonna give you some kind of rules here for how to do this. So by default on Windows 11 on Surface devices, these are set to seven. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. We're gonna zoom in a little bit using the pencil tool and uh, let's color pick actually something black. So now I just went from light pressure to heavy pressure and you can't tell. Slim Pen 2, by the way, has a different pressure curve than a stylus like the R530, which is the second place uh, for what I recommend for a Surface Laptop Studio or Surface Pro 8. Better pressure curve, but uh, isn't quite as good. This is just a notch above it. Okay, so we have set this to three, and we're gonna go back over here, and I want you to see the difference here. So I can, with comfortable pressure, I can do fully dark or full pressure lines. With light pressure, I can do light, then heavy, and then go back to light. Now I have a video up showing these exact pencil settings, so you'll want to watch that if you have questions on how to set up your pencil to make it really lovely inside of Rebel 5. Okay, so that is tip number one, adjust the pressure curve to match your stylus. Again, a Slim Pen 2, a Surface Pen, those should be set at like a three or maybe a four, a Renacer stylus, uh, I would say you can leave at the default settings of seven and you're gonna be okay. You're gonna have a nice clean uh, pressure line. So I'm gonna show you here back at seven. And let's drop it down actually. We'll put this at six. And here you can see that, that same thing. Either way, adjust it per your stylus. Now, in the past, there's a couple versions of Windows 11 that did not have uh, pressure options for non-surface um, pen users. Uh, I think they have fixed that, so you can check that in the Surface app, and you can get this in the Microsoft App Store if you don't have it. Okay, the second thing that I want to show you how to do is how to get rid of that annoying hover right click. And we're going to also change it so that we get rid of the, well, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of the uh, cursor. Okay, so let's go here. And first thing we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna go Bluetooth and devices, and then go down to pen and Windows ink, and then additional pen settings. Show cursor, that's the dot that you're seeing underneath the pen tip right now. Uh, because we're using this in the video, I'm not going to turn that off, but that's one of the options. And then notice that we have ignore touch input when I'm using my pen that has to stay off if you're using something like the touch hotkeys from Tablet Pro. So don't turn that on. It'll screw stuff up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to write 
control panel. And that should be enough to pull up control panel. Oh my, all right, let's do a little more panel. All right, here we are. Some of these have not been brought into Windows 11 with the updated UI. We went to hardware and sound, pen and touch, and then hidden here, press and hold for right click. We're gonna click on settings, turn that off. When it's on, you're gonna see this circle, this ring, that goes around and if you are trying to do some artwork and you're trying to do like a little dot right here you don't want it to do that circle because that will will make it really difficult to do detailed work okay so that is tip number two uh, tip number three is changing what the side button does on your stylus so there's a single button on the Surface Slim Pen 2. It's not very useful. By default, all it's going to do is it's going to let you pan the screen. Um, that's okay. Uh, what do we do? Okay. That's okay, but I can use two fingers and pan the screen. I really don't need to do that with the side button. So what I want that to do is I want that to do quite a bit more. So we're going to open up the pen tool. And pen tool, we can open up uh, here by double clicking down here. It can be in here and you need to download this from the Microsoft App Store. Now I have the Tablet Pro uh, Artist Pad open. So I'm just going to click up here on the pen tool icon and bring that up. So here we can change this. Let's change it to Alt. We're going to click Apply, come back over here. And now when I press the side button, I can pick colors. This is great. Okay, now I'm going to open this up. And we're going to single click the Bluetooth button. And we're going to map this over here to paint, blend, and erase. Now I've done that. Now I've done this previously, but we're going to click apply. And what you're going to see is when I press the side button, it's jumping between the different options over here. So I can paint, then I press the side button, I can blend, I press the side button, and I can erase. This is really useful. You can map it to anything that you want. All right, so use the pen tool in order to add some more power to your pen. Okay, the next option is this Tablet Pro Artist Pad. To get this to work correctly, and let me demonstrate what correctly means. We're going to hide the taskbar for a more beautiful UI, and we're going to hide all the panels. So when I press uh, this button right over here, this, I can drag and change the size. I can switch tools, and I can actually switch tools on the fly, which means when I release, I go back to this, the tool that I was just at. Um, this is called like a fast toggle. Uh, I might have just made that up, but it sounds good. <laughs> so um, here we can adjust opacity uh, and brush size very quickly, undo. Uh, there's different color picking modes, some that blend when you pick and some that just pick. So this does a lot. Open up panels, swatches, color sets, all of that. Now this works with simultaneous pen and touch, which means that when I press the space bar, and press it again, I can zoom in and I can pan, but that doesn't work if you're not using the correct tablet API. We're going to go over here to edit and then preferences and tablet right here, Windows 8 plus pointer input and in almost all drawing programs that support simultaneous pen and touch, you need to use the Windows 8 plus pointer input one. Krita does this, you have to choose the correct one. Clip Studio Paint, same thing. Uh, ZBrush, very similar. And if you're not sure which one to use, when you open up the pen tool, you'll notice right over here, Rebel 4.1 and later supports SPT. Windows 8 plus pointer input is what you need to use. Uh, let's scroll down over here to ZBrush here. WM Events in ZBrush tablet settings, that's what you need to use. Krita, Windows Ink, Tablet API to Windows Ink. 
and uh, let's find Clip Studio Paint here. Uh, I think it works by default. I don't think you have to change anything. All right, so that is very important in order to get this to work correctly. Okay, and now the last thing, uh, and probably one of the most important things to do, and it depends on the program and your computer, but for me, it seems like every single time I have this set to the wrong setting, it makes this a painful drawing experience. So here's what you got to do. Let's go over here. We're going to click here and then we're going to right click on our power and battery power mode, best performance. This is critical because when this is set to recommended, I don't know if we're going to see it here. Yep. You can already see it. It's laggy. So let's increase the brush size here. Not good. My tablet's quieter. That's neat, but not <laughs> what I want. Uh, I'll take some fan noise for better performance. So this is nice. This is very usable. It feels good. And uh, latency is almost more important than anything else. So Surface Pro 8, this is a fantastic machine. Uh, I'm doing this video on a Surface Laptop Studio, which is going to have an almost identical performance and same setups as, as the Surface Pro 8. All right, you guys, what did you think of the tips here? Is there anything that I missed? Anything else that you would recommend? Um, the stylus you use is very important. The quality of the line comes from the stylus and the screen combined. Surface Slim Pen 2 is the number one choice. <clears throat> the R530 stylus by Renacer is the number two choice. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet and you use a stylus with Windows, then this is a great channel for you. If you want to be more mobile, able to work in more locations, then subscribe right now and click the notification icon. All right, until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day.